you are a Pilates instructor who is toying around with the idea of launching your own online Pilates studio, or maybe you're just curious as to what that process looks like, then this video is for you. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Eileen and I'm a certified Pilates instructor from Miami. I have a ton of Pilates instructor resources available and up on my channel, so be sure to check those out and to subscribe for new weekly videos. In this video, we're going to be going over all the details that you can think of when it comes to not only prepping and launching your online studio, but also running one, the marketing behind it, the timeline, all associated costs, the equipment that you need, and so much more. There's a lot of information that we're going to go over. I've got my notes right here to make sure that I don't miss anything and that I can share with you all the detailed costs that I have from my experience running my own online studio. Grab your matcha, grab your coffee, your drink of choice, and maybe grab a notebook if you want to go ahead and take some notes. And with that, class is in session. Now all this information that we're going to go over, no one taught me. I've kind of just like learned along the way. So it's really important to note that this is just based off of my experience and my journey to running my online studio studio, but that doesn't mean that you need to follow these steps and this process to a T. Just maybe gain information from this video and make it your own, but there's really no right or wrong way to approach all of this. I hope that you find this video helpful, and if you do, I hope that you give this video a thumbs up. It's a great way to support my channel, and if you have any instructor resources requests that you want me to create a video on, just go ahead and drop it in the comments. I'm more than happy to help. Okay, so let's get into it. First things first. You need to ask yourself what gap are you filling the reality is that there are so many pilates instructors who have online studios there's so many fitness apps that are out there and while that doesn't mean that it should stop you from wanting to do this you do have to ask yourself the question why would someone choose yours be very clear about the vision that you have for wanting to create an online studio before you dive in into it trust me so what sets you apart who is your ideal client and their demographic very important to have this clear from the get-go so for example my online studio is called Pilates on the green it caters to golfers runners people who live an active lifestyle they play some type of sport and they want to practice Pilates to avoid injury to enhance their performance with their sport and to keep their bodies healthy throughout their active lifestyle. Either find a gap in the market or find a way to set yourself apart. It's not easy, but just think, as a Pilates instructor, what do you specialize in and how can you cater to your ideal client? The end game here is to simply help the person that is taking your classes, right? So you need to be very clear about who that is and how you will serve them. And now the best way to do this is research. This is a very important step that you cannot skip. If you skip this step, you will find yourself going through the motions and starting your online studio and then going back and doing research. So definitely don't skip this step unless you want to add more work to your workload. I want you to create a document from all the information that you've gathered from the first step, you know, figuring out what you want to do with your online studio, who your ideal client and demographic is, and taking that information to figure out who your competition is, what their price point is, basically anything that you can gather in that realm in that niche and put it together in a document. This step, this research is definitely going to help you as we go into step three, which is to create a business plan. You've determined the vision that you have, who you are appealing to, and you've done your research. So now it's time to put it all together into a concrete plan. If you have never created a business plan before, that is okay. I'm here to help you. I want you to just find a template online, a general business plan template, and customize it and make it your own. A lot of the times they will tell you all the information that you should be plugging in and from there you can start to modify and tweak based off of your idea. Also understand that with your business plan it's going to evolve over time. So it's not something that you just do once and then you forget about it and you move on. That's not the goal of having a business plan. It's really something that you can constantly refer back to, constantly modify and as your business and as your idea grows then you can go back and tweak into maybe more realistic goals that you're setting, maybe more information that you end up finding out through your research. Think of it as a growing plan and it's never going to be finished. Constantly refer back to it, constantly grow it, constantly change it. And now here are some things that I have in my business plan 
that maybe you can include in yours too. So you definitely want to include the service, right? Online Pilates Studio and your ideal client, all information that we just went over. And then maybe include like the future of your company, your short and your long-term goals. Think maybe one-year goals, five-year goals, 10-year goals. Include a mission statement and this will help you determine how clear you are with the vision on what your purpose is with your online studio. You want to include any advantages that you have, disadvantages, your services offered, which is likely going to be the memberships that you offer. Your competition, which is their price and their clientele. You want to include any branding. So maybe start to think of a name that you want to include for your online studio. Just maybe start to find some fonts, some colors, something that you can kind of tie everything together in so you have a very clear look across the board. This isn't necessary, but if someone were to see that you have your branding all set, it does make it more appealing. You'll also want to include your growth strategy, so everything that you're going to do in order to promote and grow your online studio, and your overhead costs, which we will dive way deep into in a couple of steps. I have gotten several DMs about consulting calls, so if that's something that you're interested in, I'm thinking of opening it up. You'll find a link in the description below where you can book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. The same way I take virtual privates for Pilates, I'm just going to open up a couple of slots every month to take these calls so I can help guide you if you're looking for more personalized recommendations and if you have any questions for me that I can help guide you in. Okay, so once you've got your business plan, now the fun really starts to trickle in and you get to choose the platform that you want to use for your online studio. And there are so many platforms that are out there to choose from. So here you'll want to do your research and figure out which is the best fit for you. See which one aligns with not only functionality wise what you're looking for but also the price point if you want to eventually launch an app that is definitely something to keep in mind and see if they do have that capability a lot of the times these platforms are whitelisted so when you create an app with them it's a very seamless process and you don't have to go through all the struggles of creating on the technical end on the back end your own design and app they'll have an integration that you can use so that is something definitely to keep in mind if that's part of your goals I personally use you screen but here are a couple of other options that I found when I was doing research when I was in this phase that you can take a look at as well in case it's helpful. Okay so now we're gonna get into once you have your platform and you start filming classes for your online studio what that's gonna look like and if you've been a subscriber for a while or maybe you've been following me on Instagram for a while you know all the hard work that goes into filming just one little Pilates class. So think about it like this you are everything. You are the writer, so you're planning out your classes. You are the sound person, making sure that your audio is all set up. You're the lighting person. You're the director for the camera. You're the actor on film. You're the editor afterwards. You wear a lot of hats when you run an online studio, especially if you have no help, no team like me, and you do everything on your own. Maybe eventually as your online studio grows, that's something that you can put in your goals that you want to have someone to help you with filming or someone to help you with editing. Those are goals that you can achieve over time. But in the beginning, it's likely that you will be doing all of this on your own. Maybe you can have a friend or a family member help you you out but I end up doing everything on my own because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and I want to make sure that everything is the way I want it. So the main thing that I want you to grasp from this section of this video is do not strive for perfection or you will constantly find yourself falling short of it. Do not wait until you have the perfect camera. Start with your iPhone. I'm not kidding. I started with my iPhone. It worked great. Do not wait until you have the perfect outfit. Use the same outfit for 10 classes if you want. I use the same outfit for my courses. So I choose one outfit that I film my entire course in and then I move on to a new outfit for a new course. Don't wait until you have the perfect backdrop. I was using my living room for a very long time, reorganizing my living room furniture. I would clean the floors every single time I was gonna go film. And to be completely honest, sometimes in the beginning, my mic was not on or my dog would bark in the middle of the class. And there are classes that I would film and have to end up not using them. 
I would discard them and it felt like such a waste of time it was so draining because I felt like I was doing so much and trying to figure out you know trial and error with my equipment as I was getting new equipment and just getting everything set up with my lighting in my living room and it was exhausting so imagine going through all that hard work filming a class and then not even being able to use it you also might feel pretty nervous in the beginning when you start filming because maybe you've never filmed a Pilates class before and that is okay you will run into technical difficulties you will get frustrated it's a part of the process and I do not say this to scare you I'm saying it because I want to be real with you it's honestly the reality of running an online studio from an outside perspective like before I launched my online studio I was like oh my gosh this looks so fun I can film Pilates classes I can do Pilates and call it work like this is great and then I launched my online studio and I realized all the little details that go into it, all the work that goes into it. And it's a lot, especially if no one's really guiding you or teaching you. So I hope that this video, if you're finding it helpful, again, please give it a thumbs up. I hope that this video helps guide you because I didn't have information like this when I was launching my own online studio and I was kind of just learning along the way. At the end of the day, running an online studio is running a business. And as a business owner, there's gonna be a lot of ebbs and flows, a lot of growth that comes from it. So just learn to roll with the punches be flexible and you're gonna do a great job so once you've got your classes filmed and you've got all that figured out which will take some time it's trial and error then it's the editing of it editing is pretty straightforward not gonna lie I use Final Cut Pro to edit mainly because it's where I edit my YouTube videos but you can use a free software when you're editing you're basically trimming off the beginning and the end of the clip you know when you start the camera when you end the camera you'll also be making sure that the frame is squared away so if you need to adjust the angle of it you can also adjust and enhance the audio you can adjust the brightness if you need to basically any final touches I use color grading on all of my classes so that I have the same look and feel across all of my videos this is within Final Cut Pro but you don't need to do this once you do all that you're basically going to export the file I like to organize all of my files into folders on my two terabyte external hard drive which is linked below in the description along with all of the filming equipment and tech equipment that I use so when you start uploading your classes and you start gathering a library of your classes you can start to get a feel for how you want to organize your classes maybe it's a theme that you're going for or the approach that you're bringing into your online studio so for example since my online studio caters to athletes like golfers I have a hit the range section which is basically a full library of all of the classes in my online studio but I call it hit the range you know it's like going to Pilates practice and then for all of my courses which are basically my programs I have them organized into nine whole courses and 18 whole courses so nine Pilates classes or 18 Pilates classes depending on the theme of that course I also have my weekly schedule and I just call it three whole course it's three Pilates classes I do every single week this is just a part of my marketing approach and my theme and this doesn't mean that you have to do it like this you can upload just classes without any programs in the beginning just to start building up your library and then eventually you can have programs and you can market them and create them however you like and honestly I think it's part of the fun I think it's part of being creative maybe figuring out how you set yourself apart and tying that into how you organize your classes it's pretty fun so again you don't have to use the same structure just figure out what works best for you and your classes now when it comes to your filming schedule I personally upload at least two new classes every single week I've also now grown my library to over over a hundred Pilates classes and for reference I launched my online studio last year in 2023 so figure out a schedule for you to film and something that you can stay consistent with because at the end of the day the last thing you want is to work so hard at putting together your online studio gaining members and then having them cancel because they don't feel like your class uploads are consistent enough also don't be too hard on yourself it's something that I still struggle with but I'm definitely getting better at if you miss a day of filming if you get sick if you go on vacation if you don't follow your schedule to a T 
Listen, it's okay. Do not worry. You're going to get burned out if you put too much on your plate. And also if you're seeing clients in person on top of this, or maybe you have another job on top of it, like I do, like I have so much going on, but I still find the time to make sure that I'm consistent with my uploads, not only because I absolutely love filming these classes, but also because I think of my club members. I think of them every time I say, oh my gosh, I have so much going on. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find time to film this week and then I'm like wait I'm doing this for them I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I set my priorities and I get them new classes okay so now let's get into some general costs to keep in mind so we went over equipment start with your phone that's what I did and it worked out great and then eventually you can upgrade into a camera a camcorder I like my camcorder because it will not turn off on you sometimes if you get a camera that is not meant for long-form video which is something that I dealt with you'll start filming and the camera will shut off after like 25 or 30 minutes because it's not meant for long form videos so something to keep in mind if you are going to invest in a camera make sure it is suited for long form videos especially if you're going to be filming 45 60 minute classes you'll also eventually want to invest in a proper mic which Right now, I'm honestly using one from Amazon. Eventually, I want to get a nicer one, but this one is working just fine. In the meantime, it was like 20 bucks. Of course, you'll want some lighting. The studio that I've rented at, which I'll talk about in just a second, they offered lighting, so I didn't have to get that. But eventually, when I have my own at-home studio space designated for filming classes, I'm going to need to get a really nice lighting to make sure that the lighting is good because lighting makes a huge difference when it comes to filming your classes. And then, of course, you're going to need all the stuff for the Pilates classes themselves. So I'm sure you already have a mat, but if you don't, then get a mat. And then also if you're going to use any props for your classes, like the magic circle, any weights, any props, make sure that you start collecting that and putting together the costs for each of those items. You're also going to want to form an LLC, which I think my LLC, I'll tell you right now, I'm pretty sure this was like $500 in the beginning. And to be honest, I probably could have found a cheaper way, but I ended up using a website called Zen Business because honestly it looked like very simple to do everything with them and I was not in the space to do so much research on the LLC side because I had so much other things going on so you can do your research and maybe find a cheaper approach for forming your LLC but you're definitely going to want to create one to protect your personal assets and separate it from your business you're also going to need instructor insurance which if you teach in a studio or if you teach private it's likely something that you already have but if you don't have instructor insurance I get mine through CM and F I believe that's what it's called and the cost of that annually is about $400. Aside from the website that you're going to use, so you're going to need to buy a domain for your online studio. If you also want a separate website, I have one just because I also book privates and virtuals and events for like sporting retreats and stuff like that. You can have two separate websites and if you want to take a look at both my online studio and my website to compare the differences, I think that it works great because you have your online studio, think of it as like your studio base and then you have where people can find you and reach out to you and any other information but it's really not necessary i also have my official website because my email like hello at my website name is linked to the website so that's what i use for everything business related the cost of that is going to be about $300 a year. You can also opt in for monthly options of these payments. Your platform is going to range. I would say you can expect anywhere from like $150, maybe even $100 to like $300 and above depending on if you eventually want an app. Safe range, I'm gonna say, oh, the monthly cost is going to be about $150 to run your online studio. Depending on the price point that you choose, you can see how many members you would need in order to break even for all of your monthly costs. And that's really important, right? At the end of the day, you wanna be making profit. Last couple of costs to keep in mind is if you're gonna do any email marketing, I use Flowdesk for mine. Uscreen I know has email integrated within, but it wasn't that cute to be honest. So I don't use their email. So 
software I use Flowdesk and even though it costs money I just think it's worth it because it is a lot prettier and I can customize it to my brand and my colors. I will list here a summary of all of those overhead costs that I just mentioned so that you can start gathering and thinking about how many members you are going to need in order to break even from these costs. My recommendation is to start small and to reinvest back into your business whenever you start making money. It's what I did. I have not paid myself one cent from any earnings from Pilates on the Green. And it's because I reinvest back into like cute merch and items for my members and a new filming space that I booked at, my new equipment. I'm constantly finding ways to grow my online studio. And that doesn't mean that you have to do this, but I just think of, you know, my long-term goals and anything that I can do in order to get there. Eventually, yes, the goal is to pay myself, but right now my priority is just growing my business. We'll talk about really quickly branding and social media and marketing. You do not need a massive following on socials to start your online studio. And honestly, you really shouldn't be only relying on social media to promote your online studio. If you have a well-connected and small audience that you know is gonna end up converting, that's all you need. If you have a large audience with a very, very small chance of conversion, what good is that gonna do you? So stop hyper fixating on the number. You may be surprised someone who has like 100,000 followers maybe only has like 30 or 40 people that they can convert or someone who has 5,000 followers or less can have 100 converting members because of the relationship that they have built with their community. If you have a large following and you have a super committed audience that you know is gonna convert and you have a great starting point for launching your online studio, then that is amazing, that is awesome. You should go ahead and really tap into that. But just know that if you don't have that, it's not necessary. I started with like a thousand followers on Instagram, hadn't even really started posting on YouTube yet and I don't really use TikTok. I think I have like 2000 followers on there. And the point is that I was still able to build up my business even though I had this smaller following. I've built really deep and meaningful connections with my community. So just know it's not about the number that you have, it's about the value that you're bringing. And if you're bringing good value, then you will convert members. Okay, so I know that we've gone over a lot of information in this video and if you're still with me, you're doing great. You get an A plus, all right? Class is almost done, I promise. <laughs> but let's go over really quickly on the pricing structure for your online studio. From the research that you do, you can determine a competitive price point that you want to list your memberships at. As a base, you're gonna to wanna to start with a monthly membership and an annual membership. Eventually, you can also maybe consider doing a quarterly membership. But let's say that you're charging $40 a month and you end up in your first year with 35 members. You'll be earning, I'm gonna calculate that because you know, math, not my strong suit. So 35, I said 35 members, yeah. At $40 a month, that's $1,400 a month. But depending on the platform that you use, they might take maybe a dollar or two from each member's monthly subscription. Like there may be ad additional costs removed from this. So let's just use this as an overall price point, but don't look at it to a T. From there, you'll look at all of your overhead costs that we just went over. And let's say they add up to, I don't know, $500 a month. You'll be left with $900 as profit. From this amount, you can either start putting it into your business savings and start thinking of how you wanna reinvest in the business. And getting 35 members the moment that you launch may not happen. It may take months, it may take a year, it may take years. For everybody, it's different. But I'm a firm believer that if you build it, they will come. As long as you are passionate about teaching Pilates, you're passionate about what you're doing with your online studio, and you are a hard worker, then good things are going to come and good things will happen. A lot of my online studio members have come from word of mouth, from me hosting events in Miami, and from social media. See, social media is just a piece of the pie. It is not my sole driver for bringing in new members. Word of mouth is huge. Do not underestimate it. Put yourself out there, get to know your community. It makes a big difference when it comes to converting members. The last little thing I'm gonna bubble into this video is the work-life balance that comes with running an online studio. Just know that you will likely be getting emails, DMs, messages, troubleshooting at random times of the day because of how global an online studio can be and you don't know where your members are going to be at. So learn to set boundaries for yourselves so that you can avoid burnout. 
Just because you get an email at 9 p.m. does not mean that you need to respond at that moment. This is something that I have definitely struggled with and I still struggle with. Sometimes I will check my phone, see a message, and feel the need to respond, but I'm learning how to not do that. But I want you to learn to establish boundaries for yourself so that you can avoid that burnout. And I got to say, once you learn a good flow and once you establish a system for yourself, this career is pretty amazing. In my opinion, it is the best career in the world. I love what I do. And I have big goals for my online studio that I know is not going to happen overnight. Tokyo wasn't built in a day. That is a lyric from a Casey Musgrave song. And I love it. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, but Tokyo sounds cuter. Anyways, just stay consistent with it. Dream big and know that you can build the discipline for yourself because no one's going to be telling you what to do here. It's all on you. You can build that discipline and you can achieve any goal that you set for yourself with your Pilates career. Okay, so I know in this video we went over a lot of information, but the last thing that I'm going to say is that if you end up launching your online studio and you get your first client and you get so excited and then you start getting new clients, do not get discouraged when a client cancels because I'm sorry but it is going to happen. I was really, really sad when I got my first cancellation. And you don't know what people's financial situations are. You don't know if maybe you're just not the right instructor for that person. Don't take it so personal. If someone ends up canceling, come back to this video if that ends up happening to use this as some reassurance because it's okay. And you'll learn to not feel so sensitive about it when this happens. If you end up running your own online studio one day, I would love to hear about it. Please drop it in the comments so that I can check it out. And honestly, we went over a lot of information here. So I'm honestly hoping I didn't forget anything, even though I took so many notes because I wanted to make sure that I could provide as much information to you as possible. But if you liked this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for weekly Pilates and health related videos. My new vlog next week is going to be all about my gut health journey that I've been going on this past month. I've learned a lot about my gut and I'm very excited to share the journey with you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next week. Bye!